Hey everybody, Mr. McIntosh here, and Apple just released macOS Monterey Beta 8 to all developers only one week after Beta 7. So we're really starting to come close here to the end of the beta release cycle for macOS Monterey. I'm gonna go over all the things that you're gonna need to know about this update, and I'm also gonna talk about unsupported Mac patcher news, including some problems with Patch Sur and the Open Core Legacy Patcher 0.2.5 update that just came out. So we got a lot to cover in this update. Let's jump in and get started. Mac OS Monterey Beta 8 came out on September 28th at 3.15 Central Standard Time. Apple also released iOS 15.1 Beta 2, iPad OS 15.1 Beta 2, Watch OS 8.1 Beta 2, and TV OS 15.1 Beta 2. Along with that, the iWorks suite of Numbers, Pages, and Keynote was also updated to 11.2. Now what's interesting is there are a lot of users pointed out an asterisk here that says requires Mac OS Monterey. Now keep in mind the 11.2 update of these iWork suites can be installed on Mac OS Big Sur except for these two features right here that won't be included unless you're on Mac OS Monterey. The first one is flexible collaboration allows participants to add others to a shared spreadsheet and instant translation lets you translate the selected text up to 11 languages and add the translation to your spreadsheet with a click. And that's the same for Keynote and Pages. So that's a really interesting thing that Apple did here especially when they usually don't let developers put requires Mac OS Monterey or iOS 15 in the app until the app is released day of the final release. So that was an interesting thing that Apple did here with the iWorks suite. What? Apple also released Safari 15.0 for Mac OS Big Sur and Mac OS Catalina, which is interesting because that also tells us that Mac OS Mojave is no longer supported by Apple because it has fixed vulnerabilities in here for Safari for Big Sur and Catalina. Now's the time to make the jump to Mac OS Catalina or Mac OS Big Sur. The security update 2021-006 was just released for Catalina right after the 2021 005. And remember, the Mojave OS did not get the 005 security update, so that's another reason why Mojave is no longer being supported by Apple. The Beta 8 update is available as a Delta update in System Preferences. Also, Apple released the Apple Silicon M1 IPSW Restore file for Apple Configurator 2 Quick Restores. I have that on my M1 ISPW firmware database. I put that right here as soon as it's released and you can download that directly. Apple did not release the full installer yet of Beta 8. They usually do that the next day, so that's probably going to be on Wednesday, September 29th at 12 noon Central Standard Time. I'll have a new entry in here for the full installer. Now keep in mind the beta 7 full installer was not working properly if you downloaded the install assistant here and installed it the installer app would fire up but then it would have to download again because there's a problem with the installer also if you use create install media to make a usb installer that was also broken because the installer app was only a 36 megabyte stub installer which means that the install is still there but it has to download all the content i contacted apple and they told me that this issue would be fixed in beta 8 so we will know tomorrow and i'll put that in the description if it's all fixed and you'll see a new link to the beta 7 full installer right here when it's available. To update all you need to do is go into system preferences and click on software update and you should see the Mac OS Monterey Beta 8 in here. Now let's also talk about the update itself. If you're updating for Mac OS Monterey Beta 7 it's going to be a small update only two gigabytes and you can see over here that the preference pane says 1.98 or two gigs. But what's interesting is a lot of you said well hey my update's actually a lot bigger. So if you look over here the actual size is 2.68 and that's going to get a little bit bigger each time you go back. So if we go back to that screen here we see that doing an update from beta 6 is 2.5 and doing an update from beta 5 is 2.7. So again, it gets bigger, including all the fixes of the previous releases in each one. Apple also updated the Apple M1 Apple Silicon firmware 7429408481.1. They also updated the Bridge OS version on the T2 Intel security chip to 1916.10.534.5.4. And finally, they also updated Safari. Which What's interesting about this Safari update is that they didn't just do another build version. They went all the way to 15.1. When we go into Safari, let's take a look at about Safari and we can see that it updated to 15.1. Now that's interesting because there's been a couple of people that have mentioned that Safari 15.0 has been crashing when doing certain functions. So we'll have to see if that fixes some of those issues or not. 
Now let's talk about how long it takes to prepare and install the update. After you download the update, it starts to prepare just like it does on iOS and iPad OS. It prepares the update and gets it ready for installation. That preparing phase took nine minutes on this Mac Mini 2020 M1. And once that was finished, it rebooted to the installer with the black screen and the progress bar. That part took 19 minutes total and then we were back on usable desktop. So a total t install time for macOS Monterey Beta 8 was 28 minutes, and that's about as fast as you're gonna get. So most likely if you're on an older Mac, like an Intel Mac, it's gonna be a little bit longer, but not it shouldn't be too much. And that's why I like to give you this in install time, because that's the fastest it's gonna, it's gonna be, but it shouldn't take more than an hour or so, even on the slowest 2016 or 2015 Mac, that's macOS Monterey compatible. Now let's talk about the new features and fixes in macOS Monterey Beta 8. First of all, Universal Control. We've been wondering the entire release for months now where Universal Control is, and guess what? It's not in Beta 8. So we're still waiting to see, and it's not in iOS 15.1 Beta 2 either. So we're keeping an eye, again, still to see where this is, and we're hoping that it's gonna be getting close here, or it's gonna end up getting delayed until after the Monterey Beta release to maybe, for example, macOS Monterey 12.0. 0.1 or 12.1. So we're gonna have to see this and keep an eye on this. Hopefully they can get it, but again, we rather they get it right or then come out with a half-baked product that doesn't work and have bugs. So let, we'll have to keep an eye on this and see how this goes. The next thing is there's been some users reporting that there's been some trackpad issues like scrolling issues. The good news is, is that some users on Reddit have already reported that those issues have cleared up. So you'll have to let me know, were you having some issues with trackpad? Did, it, did Beta 8 clear it up for you? Let me know know in the comments. I'm really curious to know if that worked or not. There is no new features in beta 8. There's only four resolved issues. And the problem is, if you look at these patch notes, Apple even forgot to put some of the patch notes that say resolved issues. How do I know that, right? Well, every update that Apple does, I go in there and I do a comparison between the two patch notes to find the actual changes that were added in the newest version. Because sometimes they'll repeat previous fixes in here. So this is an example of what I do. I'll take both patch notes and then I will compare them and BB Edit will actually find the differences. So for example here, you see the App Store. So this is beta 8 here and this is beta 7 patch notes. You'll see that there's a known issue that the unfinished property might return. But if you go over here into the App Store, there's no resolved issues for this particular issue. It's just gone. So we have to guess that this was already fixed and Apple didn't even put it in here. But later on down here, you do see resolved in macOS Monterey Beta 8. So they did put one. So there's a total of four different ones in here. Here's another one for iCloud, custom email domains, and custom email addresses that is not over here in the iCloud. So that's how I find the actual differences when I go through here, if Apple doesn't even put them on there. So those are the only four fixes that were resolved. There was no new features, no new known issues, and no new deprecations. Now, there it was two enterprise fixes, but I can't really share those because those are behind a Apple Seed enterprise login. But what I can do is give you a very high level view is one of them is for MDM or mobile device management erases, and the other one revolves around proxy. So if any of those interest you and you're working in an enterprise or a school that uses one of those, look at that information in there. Now let's talk about benchmarks. I ran a benchmark last time and it got a 1737 on a single core and a 7370 on a multi-core. And on beta 8, it got a 1751 is pretty close on that one. And it got a 7748 on the multi-core. So it was a little bit faster on this update. And again, that's what we do when we run the benchmark. We want to see if it's pretty close and in line with the previous one, just to make sure that there's no problems with this update. First, I want to talk about Patch Sir. Patch Sir was one of the first unsupported Mac patchers that I demonstrated for users and everybody loved it. It was very simple to use. Ben did a fantastic job on Patch Sir and a lot of people loved it. And unfortunately, He's had a couple issues in his personal life recently, and now the GitHub for Patcher has been taken down. There is people working right now 
to get it back online as soon as possible so we can continue to do installs and upgrades. I'll keep you informed in the video description the current status of PatchSer and along with I'm going to edit the description in, in my PatchSer video to be able to give you a, an update on this and I hope Ben can get through what he's going through here and I wish him all the best. Ben you are the greatest and working with you over the past year has been wonderful and I hope everything can get better for you quickly here. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was Open Core Legacy Patcher. Right after I put out my ultimate guide for Big Sur and Open Core Legacy Patcher, there was a brand new update, 0.2.5, that came out. And the only thing is, is that some of the terminal user interface or TUI options have changed. And I'm going to have to go over this in a new video to go over all the different changes in the menu system. It's not too bad. They're just put it in a different place to try to get it a little bit more organized. It's okay if you use the previous 2.0.4 version if you're using Big Sur because it works fine. But there's some really great fixes in the 0.2.5 that are directly tied to getting Monterey in a really good position before we go to launch it. So let's look at a couple of those. First of all, non-metal acceleration for Monterey. That's huge because if you look at the video that I put out for Mac OS Monterey and Open Core Legacy Patcher, it was only for metal compatible Macs from 2012 or newer. Or if you put a metal compatible graphics card in your Mac Pro or your iMac for example. Also, Beta 7 broke Kepler acceleration text. Apple removed them. What was great is that all the developers came together and they got the Kepler acceleration working in 0.2.5 in no time flat. It was amazing to see everybody get together and get that fixed. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support for legacy chipsets is now fixed. So that's why I couldn't even show you a video because Wi-Fi and Bluetooth weren't even working on 2011 and under Max. So that's fixed. Wonderful news. Also, support for AM MFI usage on non-metal Mac GPUs. Now keep in mind, we had to turn that off in my demonstrations in the previous videos because when you put the graphics acceleration of the root patches for 2011 and below to get the accelerated graphics, you had to turn this off. So it's a it's really great news that with 0.2.5, we can turn that back on. Also file evolve support for root patch Macs, and that's another great option for being able to keep your data on your machine secure. There's also an offline variant of the terminal user interface of the T UI, also firmware feature upgrading for Mac OS Monterey Beta 7 Plus upgrades and installs. When do you think Mac OS Monterey is going to be released? Are you getting excited? Are you thinking about getting a brand new MacBook Pro 14 or 16 inch when they come out? Let me know in the comments. If this video created value for you, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up or share it. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, click on that subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, you know I really appreciate all that you've done for this channel. Thank you very much and we'll catch you in the next video.